Okay, welcome everyone to the next in our series of uh, Faroe lectures. I believe that this is uh, the 16th of these uh, uh, monthly uh, seminars. So, so uh, we're really glad for you to join us. Uh, I'm Ronald Cohen at the Carnegie Institution for Science in Washington, DC. And I wanna thank the organizing committee for uh, these uh, webinars. Uh, without them, uh, this would not happen. And uh, uh, Laurent Belay, Cyrus Dreyer, Anna Grunbaum, and uh, Beth Noadnik. And I want to thank them for uh, helping uh, put together a really exciting program. So today, we're really excited to have uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Yutaro Takahashi from uh, University of Tokyo. And uh, he's going to be talking today about terahertz optical effects in ferroelectrics and multiferroics. And uh, Professor Takahashi got his PhD from University of Tokyo in 2007. And he uh, joined the uh, uh, Arata Takura Multiferroics Project, originally as a postdoc, uh, became a lecturer and then a professor at the University of Tokyo. And he's now a unit leader of uh, of uh, uh, Riken uh, uh, CMS. So uh, he's in the Department of Applied Physics uh, since, uh, uh, and professor at, since uh, 2016. So, so he, you know, the theory of modern theory of uh, polarization and all of the revolution that occurred from understanding that the, um, that the phase of the wave function is what uh, is really important in ferroelectrics. Uh, uh, rather than the charge density itself. Uh, and that was largely a domain of theorists for many years. But now we have a new generation of uh, experimentalists who are enabled to probe uh, new effects uh, using this understanding. And that's what we're gonna hear about today. Uh, Professor Takahashi has been involved or led uh, on a large number of really recent and exciting uh, uh, projects and new understanding on properties of ferroelectrics uh, and uh, probed uh, primarily optically, including new types of photovoltaic effects and uh, uh, multiferroic effects uh, uh, of various sorts. And we're gonna hear about that today and I don't wanna take away from his time. So we're gonna turn over in just a minute, but let me just explain that, uh, that you should have a question and answer uh, panel in your, uh, on your webinar and, um, so uh, if you want to ask a question, just uh, click that anytime you want and type it in. And after the talk, there'll be time for questions and discussion. Uh, we'll read off your questions and, uh, and uh, Professor Takahashi will have time uh, to discuss. And I also want to thank uh, Cyrus Dreyer here as who's as a panelist today and will also uh, help uh, with the discussion after the talk. So without any further ado, I will turn it over to uh, uh, our speaker, uh, Yokturo Takahashi. So you can go ahead and share your slides and I'll stop sharing mine. Thank you. Thank you. So just a moment, I shared my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay. Uh, thank you, Koen. Uh, and uh, so I'd like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to this uh, uh, great seminar. So I'm very happy uh, to be here. So today I'm going to talk about the terahertz optical effects in the ferroelectrics and uh, multiferroics. Okay. Oh, the, before going to the main topic, uh, I will show the, my uh, research interest, okay? So we are interested in the low energy optical phenomena uh, of the emergent materials uh, because uh, in the Roizen region, the many interesting phenomena appear <coughs> such as the elementary excitations of the ferric materials and some electronic transition of the uh, topological state. So by using the uh, many optical uh, method, such as a terahertz polarimetry or 
broadband for elementary and high feed terahertz source. Uh, we investigate the uh, optical response uh, of the uh, materials, such as emergent materials. Okay. So uh, this is a, uh, our uh, research direction. And in addition to the multi ferroics and uh, for electronics, uh, we also interested in the topological electronic state and topological spin texture that can that uh, generates the uh, the low energy uh, electronic dynamics. Okay, so today I will talk about the uh, the recent topic of the multi ferroics and the ferroelectronics. Okay, so they are the collaborator of this work. The Masuda and Okamura and the Morimoto are the are main player of the today's topic. Okay, so first half of this seminar, I talk about the electric control of the natural optical activity in the multiferroics. And uh, second half of this seminar, I, I talk about the terahertz photovoltaic effect in the ferroelectronics. Okay, uh, let me uh, uh, start from the very beginning uh, with the uh, spin driven ferroelectricity. The spontaneous breaking of the inversion symmetry can induce the spontaneous polarization. For example, the displacement of ions in the crystal lattice breaks the space inversion symmetry and spontaneous polarization emerges. So we now we focus on the breaking of the inversion symmetry by the uh, spin orderings. The spin have a magnetic moment, but no charges. This, uh, but the ordering of the uh, spins can break the inversion symmetry. The famous example is the uh, this cycloidal spin spiral. The, this uh, spin orders give rise to the fair electricity even in the central symmetric crystals. Okay, so uh, let me look at the, uh, 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 the symmetry breaking by the uh, spin spirals. The spin is a actual vector, so the that shows the sign reversal with the inversion operation. Okay, let's consider that this are top. Uh, cycloidal spin spiral, okay? So the spin spiral state is characterized by the helix, helicity that, so in this case, the, you can see the clockwise rotation of the uh, spin spiral from left to right. So this uh, spin uh, structure has the clockwise helicity. So, and now I assume the inversion center here, and uh, do the uh, inversion operation, okay? So in this case, the, uh, the, this uh, spin site moves to this one and uh, simultaneously, the magnetic moment is reversed. And for example, in the, this top spin uh, turns into this uh, down spin, okay? So you can see here the resulting spin structures. So the, uh, the hasty, is changed from this to this. Now we have a counterclockwise helicity of the spin structures. So these spin structures are never the same. So this means the uh, uh, inversion symmetry is broken by these uh, spin structures. This cycloidal spin structure always belongs to the polar symmetry. So the uh, this uh, if the material have uh, this cycloidal spin structure, materials has a, a polarity or ferroelectricity. Okay, so the spin driven uh, ferroelectricity has been found uh, in the perovskite manganite. Uh, the you know that this uh, perovskite uh, structure has uh, some uh, d electrons and uh, on the uh, local magnetic moment. Uh, on the manganese ion, 
uh, is ordered, uh, ordered uh, in the low temperatures. Okay? So this uh, terbium manganite has a, spin, a cycloidal spin phase in low temperature upon this uh, phase transition to the spin spiral phase, the uh, spontaneous polarization emerges. And they demonstrate even the magnetic field control of the spontaneous polarization. The mechanism of the spin driven ferroelectricity, which connects the uh, spin uh, to the uh, electronic charge is explained by the uh, spin current model or inverse Justin scheme molecular interaction. The local electric polarization is described by this formula. So SI cross SJ is a, a cross product of the neighboring spins and EIJ is a, a unit vector connecting these spins, okay? Let's consider the, this uh, local polarization for this uh, cycloid spin spiral, okay? So the cross product of the neighboring spin is always a perpendicular to the, this uh, monitor, okay? All have all uh, direction is the same, okay? And EIJ is a unit vector. So connecting uh, these uh, spin pairs. So the uh, local polarization uh, has a, a uh, same direction as, uh, okay, so that this uh, uh, all pair show the same uh, electric polarization. So the uh, net spontaneous polarization appears on this uh, cycloidal spin spiral. Okay, so the, so the cycloidal spin structure uh, can give rise to the ferroelectricities. The, Important point is uh, uh, if we change the helicity of the, this uh, cycloidal spin structure from clockwise to counterclockwise, the, we observe the sign reversal of the spontaneous polarizations. So the change of the uh, uh, sign of the polarization means a change of the helicity in this uh, spin structure. Okay. So uh, we have a different types of the symmetry breaking. Okay, that is a, a chirality. So any chiral object uh, is distinguished in terms of handedness. And the mirror image of the uh, right-handed system is a, a left-handed system. Okay, so the this. And the concept of the chirality appears in many various fields, such as in high energy physics and biology and metamaterials and chemistry and uh, uh, condensed matter systems. Okay? Usually, the chirality of matter is derived from the asymmetry of coordinates of the atomic positions. So our question is, can the spin structure induce the chirality of matter? The answer is yes. So similar to the helix or spring, uh, the screw type spin structure uh, have a chirality. Okay, let's check the asymmetry rising from the screw spin structures. Uh, we have to be careful uh, about the mirror operation of the magnetic moment. So for example, uh, when the magnetic uh, moment is parallel to the mirror frame, the mirror operation changes the sign of the magnetic moment, uh, similar to this uh, circular current, okay? But uh, if the magnetic moment is perpendicular to the mirror frame, the sign of the magnetic moment does not show that, does not change. Okay, so let's consider the uh, mirror operation of the, this uh, uh, screw spin spirals. Okay, uh, I prepared a, a clockwise uh, spin spiral here and uh, let's do the uh, mirror operation. Okay, for example, the, this uh, top spin turns into this one by the mirror operation. 
because only the inflate component of the magnetic moment, so the sign change. And the resulting uh, spin structure is uh, this one, okay? So the, you can see the change of the helicity. This one, this structure has a clockwise uh, helicity, but this one has a counterclockwise one. So these uh, spin structures are never the same. So that this structure can be distinguished in terms of chiralities. Okay. So and the, the spin structure screw type spin spiral have a different chiral helicity, have a different uh, chiralities. Okay. So this is a summary of the uh, symmetry, asymmetry of the uh, spin spiral. The cycloidal spin spiral has a polarity and a screw spin spiral has a chirality. Okay. So let's consider the superposition of this chiral screw spin and polar uh, cycloidal spin spiral. This is, that is, a, uh, this is a counted spin spiral. This counted spin spiral has both chirality and polarity. The important point is the sign of the chirality and the polarity are rigidly connected in this case. So the, uh, when we reverse the polarity by electric field, uh, the sign of the chirality is also uh, changed, okay? So the, in the central symmetric crystal, the uh, different uh, a state in terms of chirality, right handed, uh, left handed screw are uh, degenerate. So the uh, G state can be controlled by the electric field through the polarity of this uh, cycloidal component by driving the uh, uh, domain walls uh, similar to the conventional ferroelectrics. So we can control the chirality in this uh, structure. Okay. So, so far, I talk about the uh, symmetry of the spin spiral. Next, we talk about the, some electronic or uh, optical response of the spin spiral. So, we focus on the natural optical activity. Okay. So, natural optical activity is the most fundamental nature of the chiral object. Any chiral object can show the uh, optical activity. So the, the linearly polarized light passing through the, this chiral object uh, shows optical rotations. And a rotation angle, uh, so the sign change or the reversal of the chiralities. So we can distinguish the chirality of matter by this uh, natural optical activity. And uh, this is a phenomenon is optical effect. So the rotatory power or the magnitude of the rotation angle strongly depend on the energy of photon or frequency of light. So you have to choose the resonance to enhance the, this natural optical activity. Okay, here uh, we uh, use the elementary excitation uh, of the spin spiral state. The spontaneous uh, symmetry breaking is associated with the uh, uh, elementary excitations. For example, the ferroelectrics has a soft phonon, ferromagnets has a ferromagnetic resonance. The multiferroics has an electromagnon. This, this is an electrically active magnon. So the emergence of the spin driven ferroelectricity is always accompanied by the electromagnet. In the case of the cycloidal spin spiral, the fluctuation of the uh, 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 this uh, spontaneous polarization uh, is equal to the rotational oscillation of the, this uh, spin spiral state. So that this is an electric active magnum, electromagnum, okay? 
So the electromagnet has been found in the perovskite manganite. This is the optical spectra in the infrared region below the interband electronic transition. Okay. You can see the sharp resonance of the optical phonon in the far infrared region and below 10 MeV in the terahertz region, uh, we can see the resonance of the electromagnet. We use uh, this electromagnet resonance to enhance the natural optical activity. Okay, the motivation of this work is the observation of enhanced natural optical activity arising from the magnetically induced chirality and control of the uh, natural optical activity. So we, to realize this motivation, we use a, a strongly coupled chirality and polarity in the Cantex spin spiral. And we also use the elementary excitation of the multiplorics, that is the electromagnet. And to detect the optical rotation from the natural optical activity, we use the terahertz time domain polarimetry. Okay. So uh, let, uh, let me move on to the, uh, uh, the result. Okay. So we use the multifluoric cupric oxide. This material has a spin spiral phase in the intermediate temperature around the 220 Kelvin. In this spin spiral phase, the spontaneous polarization is observed. And this uh, spin spiral has a canted spin plane. So that this structure should be chiral. Okay? The electromagnet has been observed in this cupric oxide. Uh, this is a, a spectra of the uh, uh, terahertz region below 5 mEV. So you can see the clear resonance structure around 3 mEV. This is the resonance of the electromagnet. So in other phase, uh, the paramagnetic or lower uh, paraelectric phase, we don't observe any resonance in the terahertz regions. This uh, resonance of electromagnon has been ascribed to the fluctuation of the spontaneous polarization. So uh, we use a uh, terahertz time domain polarimetry to uh, measure the optical rotations. So by using this technique, we can directly measure the uh, uh, temporal profile of the electric field of light. Okay, this is a, is a, uh, the data of the uh, uh, terahertz field uh, observed in this our systems. Okay, so the, we use a, a polarizer to detect the uh, polarization rotations. The merit of this uh, method is that we can uh, deduce the uh, optical constant from the obtained uh, terahertz data. And uh, by using this uh, polar method, we can deduce the two by two uh, dielectric tensor uh, without using the Akramastronic uh, transformation. Okay. This is a very important uh, for our study. Okay. This is a uh, uh, optical data. Okay. So this is a uh, theta. Theta is a, a rotation angle after the sample, and eta is a ellipticity. Okay, so that these uh, quantities can be calculated directly from the uh, uh, terahertz waveform. Okay, so you can see the clear resonance of the uh, optical rotations. Uh, this uh, peak magnitude is a forty milliradian. Okay, so that in the Ellipticity, we can see the some uh, dispersive structures. And this optical rotation appears only in the spin spiral phase. Uh, this result suggests the appearance of natural optical activity and uh, the material uh, become chiral. Okay. So to get a more convincing evidence of the appearance of the natural optical activity, 
we use a, a dielectric tensor. This dielectric tensor expresses the induced polarization by the electric field of the light. Okay. If you have a isotropic medium, the the this uh, tensor only has a diagonal component, and all polarization is eigenpolarization. So there is no uh, optical rotation. And uh, if the material gets anisotropy, the uh, we have a, a symmetric part in the off, dio off diagonal component. Okay. So uh, this is a uh, uh, indicates uh, linear biofringence and. The, this linear biofringence uh, can change the light polarization, okay? And the optical activity, natural optical activity can be described by the anti-symmetric part in the, this off-diagonal part, okay? This appearance, this of the anti-symmetric part uh, evidences the appearance of the optical activities, okay? In this case, the circular polarization is eigenpolarization. The answer light polarization always uh, is rotated in the uh, matter. Okay. So we deduce the anti-symmetric part and the symmetric part by from the obtained uh, uh, of diagonal spectra. Okay. As you can see here, the, the symmetric part, there is no resonance. And, uh, but in, the, in contrast, the anti-symmetric part shows the clear resonance structure. This result indicates that the material uh, shows the optical activity and uh, the spin spiral state uh, induce the chirality to the matter. Okay, so uh, we can check the correlation with the phase transitions. Okay, this horizontal axis is the temperature, and these are the color coded spectra of electromagnon and optical activities, real part and imaginary part. We observed a clear resonance of the optical activity only in the spin spiral phase. In other phase, uh, this optical activity disappears. And uh, the, on the on resonance of the electromagnet, uh, we observe the enhanced uh, optical activity. Okay. So next, we demonstrate the hysteresis of the uh, natural optical activities. We measured uh, optical rotation uh, of the sample and in the electric field. And this hysteresis is observed in isothermal condition. Okay. First, we prepare a sample without electric field cooling. So the multi-domain state is formed. In terms of chirality, this is a racemic mixture, the typical domain size of 10 or 20 micrometers. Uh, be because the wavelength of the terahertz is larger than the, this uh, domain size, the the right, the the uh, optical response uh, reflects the average of the optical rotation. So because uh, this uh, is a racemic mixture state, the rotation angle is zero. And next we apply the electric field to the sample, okay? So the increase of the optical rotation is observed. And this uh, optical rotation is saturated. Uh, this indicates the uh, formation of the form chiral state for a single domain in terms of chirality. Okay. So next we reverse the electric field and in the negative field, we observe the sign change of the optical rotations. And again, the, uh, this optical rotation is saturated. This means the reversal of the chirality by the electric field. Uh, so we can demonstrate the ferro chiral nature of the spin spiral. Okay. And we next we demonstrate the temporal control of the natural optical activities. Uh, first, we, we applied positive uh, electric field pulses and uh, single chiral state or home chiral state 
is whole, and this uh, persistent uh, chiral state appears. And next, we apply the negative electric field pulse, and the sign change of the optical activity is observed. Okay, so that we can control the chirality uh, through the uh, pol uh, polarity of the uh, spin spiral state. Okay, and so uh, this uh, uh, a chirality or a optical activity of the spin spiral state is uh, uh, does not depend on the uh, material. So we demonstrate the, this natural optical activity in the other systems. Uh, next, I use a, a copper ion oxide. In this case, the uh, crystal structure in the paramagnetic phase is a, a central symmetry, does not have any chirality. In the lowest temperature, the screw spin state is formed. In this phase, we observe the large uh, optical rotation on the resonance of the electromagnet. Uh, this is optical step in the uh, terahertz region, and we observe the large optical rotation. So this result uh, clearly shows that uh, enhanced natural optical activity is a general nature of the spin spiral. So far, uh, I focus on the breaking of the space inversion symmetry of the polarity uh, of the spin spiral state. And this uh, spin order is a comp uh, sometimes induced the time reversal symmetry, okay? So for example, this is a conical spin, screw spin state, screw spin spiral breaks the time reversal symmetries. In this case, uh, the uh, material can show the more uh, optical effects, such as uh, uh, directional dichroism or bi gyrotropic bifringence or uh, magnetic chiral effect. I briefly show uh, this uh, optical effect. Okay, so okay, so this is a uh, just a moment. Uh, optical spectra uh, of the uh, perovskite manganite. Okay, uh, we observe the non-reciprocal directional dichroids. This means uh, this is the optical diode effect. So the uh, optical absorption strongly depends on the momentum of the photon. So so the sign change of the uh, uh, momentum of the photon, the optical response changes. We observe the large uh, directional dichroids on these uh, spin structures. Okay. And next point, the uh, uh, gyrotropic biofringence. This is a, a, a optical activity, but different from the natural optical activity and the uh, magnet optical parity effect. And this effect. Uh, emerges in the uh, spin spiral state. Okay. So I don't mention detail, but uh, uh, different optical activity appears. Okay, and last one is the magnet chiral effect. This is also the uh, uh, optical diode effect, and the chirality and magnetization can induce the uh, this optical diode effect. On the resonance of the electromagnet, we observed a huge uh, non reciprocal optical effect or a difference of the uh, optical absorption. Okay, so the, we can uh, realize the many uh, optical effects by using the spin spiral state and enhance these optical effects always enhanced uh, on the resonance of the electromagnet. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the uh, second half of this uh, seminar. Okay, so we talk about the uh, uh, terahertz photovoltaic effect in the ferroelectrics.
Okay, so the photovoltaic effect convert the photon to the electric current. Okay, uh, usually the interband optical transition uh, induce the uh, photo, photo current. Okay, and generally this uh, photo current is expressed by the second order nonlinear optical effect. Uh, this J is a current and uh, sigma is a nonlinear conductivity and EJ and EK is the electric field of light. Okay. So the uh, many solar cells and the uh, uh, photo detector use this uh, photovoltaic effect. Uh, the most famous one is the PN junctions. Okay. The creation and of the electron hole pair uh, in this uh, device uh, can generate the, a current flow. Okay, so we have a different uh, photovoltaic effect. That is uh, the bulk photovoltaic photovoltaic effect. Okay, that occurs in the uh, polar or ferroelectric material. Okay, okay so recently. Uh, this part photovoltaic effect has uh, received uh, more, much attention in connection with the uh, very phase theory. Okay. The shift current is uh, one of the mechanisms of the uh, bulk photovoltaic effect. And this effect, this mechanism, mechanism is associated with the uh, Electronic polarization. Okay. So, in general, the electronic polarization is composed of the ionic polarization and electronic polarization. The electronic polarization can be written by using the, this very, very connection. This very connection is the geometrical quantity of the band structures. So, uh, the, the integration of the very connection over the occupied band results in the, this electronic polarization. Okay. The shift current is a bulk photovoltaic effect arising from the, this uh, electronic polarization. Okay. So the shift current, J, is, uh, can be written as like this. and uh, this R, R is a shift vector. Shift vector is a difference of the very connection between the uh, conduction band and the valence band. So that this shift current can be viewed as a change of the electronic polarization upon the uh, optical transitions. And the shift vector uh, is a, uh, the End of the uh, density of the electronic density in the real space. Okay, the for example the uh, the photo current in the famous barium titanate is explained by this uh, shift current mechanism. Okay, this is a spectrum of the uh, uh, photo current uh, in the UV region above the uh, interband transitions. And uh, this spectra is reproduced by the uh, calculation, uh, by the first principle calculations, including the shift current mechanism. Okay. So uh, the recent progress is the uh, observation of the large uh, photo current in the low energy regions. The, in the uh, tenor arsenide, uh, this is a, a wild same, famous wild same metal. And, and the photon with the energy of the 100 eV or uh, 10 micron in the uh, wavelengths can induce a large photocurrent in this same metal. And this large photocurrent is ascribed to the shift current uh, occurs uh, on the interband transition between the topological 
band, electronic band structure. Okay. So, however, uh, it is difficult to get uh, more lower uh, uh, the photo current in the more, more lower photon energies because usually in the semi metal, uh, this uh, topological electronic state, uh, the, uh, there is a conduction electrons and the low energy optical response is dominated by the uh, due to the response. So we propose the uh, phonon shift current. If the phonons are coupled with the electrons, you know, the uh, el el electron phonon coupling, the resonant excitation of a phonon can generate the photo current uh, because the creation of one phonon changes the electronic state and change of the electronic state uh, can show the uh, shift current, okay? So the theory part is de developed by the uh, uh, Takahiro Morimoto and the Naoto Nagaosa in the University of Tokyo and Riken, okay? So we uh, use a rice mail model to express the uh, non-central symmetric electronic structure. This uh, AB, AB lattice and asymmetry of the transfer expressed by this uh, delta T and minus T, minus delta T uh, induce a breaking of the inversion symmetry. And uh, we introduce the electron phonon coupling. The, the G is the strength of the electron phonon coupling and the B is the uh, phonon operator, okay? So by the, in this uh, model, we can deduce the uh, nonlinear conductivity which express the fourth current, okay? It's a sigma two. This sigma two is written by the sigma one. Sigma one is a, a usual uh, optical conductivity and R, R is a, uh, equal to the, uh, the shift vector. So this result suggests the a creation of the phonon can induce the shift current or for the current even in the insulator without the creation of the electron hole pair. Okay, so to demonstrate the phonon shift current, we use the famous uh, barium titanate. Okay, so uh, this barium titanate in the tetragonal case phase at around the room temperature uh, has a two different phonon mode. One is a localizational mode. This mode is a fluctuation of the spontaneous polarization and uh, polarized parallel to the uh, uh, spontaneous polarization. This uh, spectralizer, this blue shaded one. And uh, we also have unfrozen Slater mode. This is a, a soft mode of this system. And uh, uh, this uh, Slater, uh, this mode is polarized perpendicular to the spontaneous polarizations. Okay, the formal response is a uh, highly anisotropic. Okay, uh, so this aspect of the this Slater mode is uh, this red one, uh, more stronger uh, resonance. Okay, so to create the phonon in the barium titanate. So we use the uh, pulse terahertz source. Uh, we generate the pulse ter terahertz pulses by using the nonlinear optical effect in the retrieval niobate crystal. And the terahertz pulses are uh, focused on the sample. And uh, this is a waveform of the uh, terahertz uh, sources uh, obtained by using the terahertz time domain spectroscopy. And this is the power amplitude of the uh, terahertz pulses. Okay. So by using this pulse, we can uh, resonantly excite the both uh, phonon mode. Okay. So this is the result. So uh, we prepared a single, single ferroelectric domain of the sample, okay, by the electric field cooling and irradiate the terahertz pulses. The whole current is measured by using the oscilloscope, okay? 
this is a uh, time profile of the uh, hot current generated by the terahertz pulses. Okay? So we observe the uh, hot current by uh, irradiating the uh, terahertz light. And uh, this uh, hot current shows sign change with the sign reversal of the spontaneous polarization. This is consistent with the uh, symmetry of the nonlinear optical conductivity. Okay. And uh, we observed a uh, uh, fault current in different uh, light polarization, the parallel to the spontaneous polarization and perpendicular to that one. And, but the magnitude is uh, different. So the, this fault current response is highly anisotropic. Uh, this result is consistent with the anisotropic phonon response. Okay, so this is just a comparison between the uh, phonon shift current in the terahertz region and uh, the fault current uh, by the electronic excitation in the UV regions. The measurement was done in the same condition. Okay. And the uh, photo current efficiency of the uh, uh, phone shift current is uh, as large as uh, uh, that for the electronic transitions. This result shows that uh, uh, photo current efficiency is uh, large, uh, large in, in, even in the uh, phone excitation. Okay. So we also demonstrate the first principles calculation, okay, by this calculation was done by the uh, Professor Guo, and uh, by using this uh, uh, band structure of the barium titanate and uh, calculated a uh, full spectra, uh, we can, we obtain the uh, spectra of the nonlinear conductivities on the resonance of the uh, soft mode we observed uh, resonance structure of the nonlinear conductivities. Uh, this result also supports our assignment that uh, so, uh, phonon shift current uh, is arising from the, uh, 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 terahertz photo current is arising from the phonon shift current. Okay. So uh, let me summarize my uh, seminar. Uh, first half of this seminar, uh, I talk about the electric field control of the natural optical activities in multiferroics. We use a uh, strongly coupled uh, chiral and chirality and polarity in the Chantet Smith system, and we demonstrate the control of the natural optical activity. Okay? And uh, second half uh, of this seminar, I talk about the uh, terahertz for the voltaic effect in the ferroelectrics. And we observe the phonon shift current by the uh, excitation of the uh, phonon and uh, uh, in the barium titanate. And the uh, theory can explain the, uh, well, this uh, result very well. Okay, so the, let's finish this seminar. Uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, great. Thank you. That was really, really exciting. So, uh, so uh, uh, I remind the audience, you can type uh, questions into the Q&A uh, panel, and we will read them and discuss them. Let me let me start with the with the first question, which is a little bit uh, removed from what you actually uh, uh, talked about directly. And, and then I'll turn over, I should have let Cyrus ask first. But let, let me uh, just go ahead and ask this. It, it, what's the potential for, for using these effects in uh, as optical logic uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, elements? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So the, yeah. So yeah. In the case of the uh, uh, electrical control of the natural optical activity. So the, uh, yeah, if we have a, uh, yeah. Yeah, we can uh, make the um, uh, room temperature multiferroic. So the, the by using this uh, these uh, materials, so we can control. Uh, we can use uh, this phenomena to control the terahertz light. 
uh, the you know, problem is uh, the the telehealth technology is uh, still a uh, developing field. So the the there is the uh, little uh, commercial applications. So, but uh, I think the uh, we can use uh, uh, this uh, uh, spin spiral response of the spin spiral state to the uh, the potential applications. And second half is the topic I talk about the photovoltaic effect. And uh, yeah, I I think this is a, a very promising effect for the terahertz detector uh, because the yeah in the in the terahertz region the uh, we don't we don't have a sensitive terahertz detector, so we have to use the uh, the uh, liquid helium cooled uh, uh, barometer uh, to get the uh, uh, high sensitivities. Uh, I think the uh, uh, the sensitivity is strongly depends on the material, but uh, uh, I think this effect can be used as a uh, so the terahertz detector. Okay, very exciting. Very exciting. Cyrus, would you like to uh, uh, ask something? Sure. Yeah, I, I had a couple of questions. Um, yeah, very, very interesting talk. Uh, I guess my my first question was on the the uh, the phonon uh, uh, bulk photovoltaic effect. So I, I didn't quite understand what the what the mechanism was. So is it is it just the fact that you're you're driving a, a polar Phonon, uh, or does the phonon need to be chiral or something like that? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so just a moment. Okay. So in this case, so the uh, yeah, we use uh, the uh, most famous uh, the ferroelectric material, and uh, so this is not, nothing to do with uh, sort of chirality, and uh, so yeah, the all the optical phonon. Uh, can show the this uh, uh, photo current uh, based on the, this uh, theory, uh, but uh, so important point is that this uh, uh, pre uh, theory predicts that the uh, uh, nonlinear conductivity has a uh, omega inverse term, so the low energy phonon can in induce optical phonon can induce the uh, larger photo current. So we use uh, this. Uh, 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 soft phonon, but uh, any uh, optical phonon can show the uh, photovoltaic effect in the polar or ferroelectric material. So even even if it's um, so, I know for you you need a you need a, a terahertz act or IR active mode, but even even a Raman active mode would uh, work. No, no, no. The the yeah yeah the this mechanism need a. Uh, uh, the excitation of the uh, polar mode. Yeah, the mm -hmm. optical, yeah, optical phonon is a, yeah, IR active phonon is needed. Got it, got it. And that's causing the, this, some polarization change, which gives you the yeah, photo. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. And maybe just one more quick question. Um, uh, is, can you, Generate a uh, circularly polarized terahertz light. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, this is the next target of my research. Okay, so, yeah, I want to generate the, the terahertz light by using the this electromagnetic resonance. Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, exactly my next target. Yeah, I hope yeah uh, we can do that. So you can generate that. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Great, fantastic. I, I, we have some questions typed in uh, from the audience. Let me uh, read them out in order. So from Jan Dak uh, uh, asked the question: uh, Is the spin-driven ferroelectricity uh, improper, uh, formally improper ferroelectricity? Yes. Yes. This is a, yeah, a so-called improper electricity. Okay, yeah. and we we have uh, um, a couple questions from uh, uh, 
Yuxian uh, Wang. Uh, so he asked if you're using uh, single crystals in the experiments. Actually, yes, I'll, I'll yeah. ask the questions one by one. He has several questions. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, we use a, a single crystal for both uh, experiment. And uh, in the case of the cupric oxide, yeah, in the, for the tele health measurement, we need a larger single crystal. Typically, we use a two or three millimeter uh, samples to uh, get the optical constant of the materials. And uh, so we cut the uh, crystal and uh, uh, so I don't have a, a, a picture, but uh, so typically the, this uh, uh, rectangular shaped crystal is used and uh, mm -hmm. uh, use the uh, maybe the one one zero plane of this uh, crystal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was the second question. Is what was the size of the crystal? So so you said several yeah. millimeters. Yeah. Yeah. And then are there effects from uh, domains and domain scattering? Uh, yeah, in this case, yeah, we don't observe the scattering from the domains. Yeah, maybe the, yeah, yeah. There is a possibility of the scattering, but uh, at least in our measurement, we don't observe the uh, scattering of the terahedrite. Okay. And uh, Sophit Singh asks, uh, says, thanks for such an interesting talk. And can you please comment on the lifetime of the electromagnons? Ah, yes. Okay. So the, yeah, yeah. The, in the many multiferics, the electromagnet is observed. And uh, the multiferics, the electromagnet has a, yeah, maybe typically the broader line with it. So I think the, the, for, the, yeah, based on this uh, line videos, the lifetime is uh, uh, typically the one over two picosecond. Yeah. Okay, very good. And uh, we have a question from Pin Yang. Uh, I, he, I, I'm not sure which part he's talking about, but I think the photovoltaics. He says, what are the charge carriers and are uh, trapped? Trapped polarons involved. Yeah. Okay. So the, this is a, a good question. So, yeah, in the case of the shift current, uh, we don't need the uh, uh, charge carrier. The the electronic state uh, of the band structure can induce the uh, current. And uh, uh, if we don't have uh, any uh, carriers the uh, current can be observed at the edge of the sample. Uh, yeah, so yeah. In addition to the, this uh, phonon shift current, the, the case of the gen creation of the ekiston, the ekiston does not have a charge. In that, even in that case, uh, we observe the uh, shift current. So the, yeah, uh, in this mechanism, we don't need a, uh, Charge carrier. So, so are you, you're saying it's an intrinsically many body effect is, uh, or what? I mean, mm -hmm. something, if there's a current, it seems like there. So you're saying it's not a quasi particle carrying mm -hmm. current? Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah. We discussed this point with uh, the Christian, but uh, yeah, we don't have a final answer, but uh, now we think the some uh, change of the electronic state in the sample uh, result in the current at the edge of the uh, crystal. And so the, there is no the uh, charge carriers uh, in the sample. So the, yeah, we use a very high, highly insulating sample. Okay, it's interesting. I think this is interesting for some uh, theorists to follow up on. I have a lot of questions, so let me, uh, I, because we're running out of time, uh, let me quickly ask, a, so Peng Cheng asked, in the electronic shift current, uh, normally, I I'm adding to his question, electron hole pairs are separated by an internal electric field. Um, I think he's asking a similar question to the last one, except it's, uh, and I think I, I might, uh, uh, 
because uh, I'm going to let you answer him offline because I think it's going to take more time than we have to discuss it. Further questions about exactly what's carrying the charge. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to be uh, insulting to uh, uh, Dr. Chen. I just, we need to move quickly because we need to wrap up. But Elan uh, Gavan uh, Hamafraba uh, asks, says, uh, thanks for the great talk. Uh, does the laser wavelength energy have to be larger than the band gap? Or uh, I'm thinking the answer is not. Uh, uh, is, is, uh, is there any relationship to the band gap in the, in the uh, uh, phononic photovoltaic effect? Uh, no, no, no. Ah, okay. So the, now we use a, a terahertz, right? And uh, the energy of the terahertz, right, is a milli EV. And mm -hmm. this is smaller than the band gap mm -hmm. of the I think we're going to have to uh, wrap up the questions here because we're, we've run out, out of time. Uh, but And I want to just uh, uh, make a few final comments. But I uh, want to thank the speaker again for a fantastic uh, talk. And uh, I'm going to send you, uh, uh, Professor Takahashi, the, uh, the questions that people uh, uh, asked that didn't get answered. And you can answer them offline by email. Uh, yeah, and, and so uh, let me uh, uh, share my uh, uh, okay. my uh, final screen. Thank you again. That was fantastic. Uh, let me find okay. my. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Let me just find my slides again. Ah, where is it? Here it is. There we go. Oops. I'm getting the rainbow wheel. Okay, let me try this again. Sorry. Ah, okay. I want to uh, just uh, mention quickly uh, the next uh, talk in October, October 13th, will be uh, by uh, R. Ramesh, Professor Ramesh from University of California, Berkeley. And his talk will be entitled A New Era in Ferroelectrics. So I hope to see you there. And very shortly, we will be sending out the uh, announcement of the uh, uh, Fundamental Physics of Ferroelectrics and Related Materials uh, Workshop, February 15th, 5th through 8th in Golden, Colorado at the Colorado School of Mines. And the website is shown on the lower right, but the website is not really up yet, but it should be in the next week. So please uh, be looking for that. And I want to thank you all and uh, especially thank the speaker and thank all of the participants for being here and making this uh, successful. So thank you all and goodbye until uh, next month. Thank you. <laughs>